Welcome to the second video. If you are starting here and you missed the first video, I would highly recommend going back and watching the informational section of the talk before taking these challenges. But if you already know awk or you've already got a pretty good grasp on it and you just wanna have some fun, maybe test your skills, maybe learn a little bit more, by all means, feel free to stay. I'm not gonna stop you. Uh, I'm going to briefly recap the scenario for our challenges, and then we'll start taking a look at how I did it and how I solved. All of my solutions are available at this GitHub repository at the top, and there's also a Ruby script there that I use to generate this data. So if you look through all my solutions first and you know maybe test them out, try them out, and you decide that you want to try it again to make sure you've got the right answer with yours, you can regenerate the data using that Ruby script and most of it is randomized so you have slightly different results. So it would give you a chance to test and see if you did it properly. Uh, there are a few questions where that's not the case and you'll, we'll run into those. But uh, generally speaking, you can generate your own and uh, try it out on there. So without uh, further ado, the scenario the boss has given us a text or a uh, TSV file, a tab separated value file full of payroll data. She would like us to run some analysis on it. We recently learned about awk and its amazing processing power. And we have decided that this is an awesome chance to use our new skills. So we're going to do some payroll processing with awk. Um, you should primarily try to use awk, but you can and you should in at least one case combine it with other tools. So pipe it to sort and unique, for example, when it makes sense. Um, the two tools I would say to stay away from though, try not to use grep or sed because uh, awk can handle the same things as them. And uh, we are after all trying to learn awk. So you can likely solve these with grep and sed to some extent, but uh, you should try not to because you'll learn a lot more if you don't. Okay, let's get into some of the challenges. The first question. How much money per hour does the janitor make? Great question. Um, so this screenshot here you're seeing, this is what the data looks like. Uh, this is just the first 17 lines. There's hundreds, I think thousands of lines in there. Um, but you kind of need to know the structure of the data before you can start writing a script. So I wanted to show that. So how much money per hour does the janitor make? Let's take a look here. The first line here is the headings of our data. So first column will be first name, last name, hourly wage, hours worked, office, title, start date. So column one, column two, column three, column four, five, six, and seven. So column seven is the title. Uh, because this uh, tab separated data is a little bit messy here, it's hard to see, but our, our very first entry here is line two, Deanne Felkins. Her hourly wage is $27.13 an hour. She worked 34 hours this week. Her home office that so she's based out of is in Concord. Her title is DevOps, and her start date was April 9th of 1977. So she's been around here for a little while. Very much appreciate your hard work there, Deanne. So we can take that basic structure and now try to figure out how much money the janitor makes. Let's think about how we would extract the janitor out from this data. Well, the title is probably a great place to start because his title is hopefully just janitor. So we can write a simple expression that looks at each record, tries to figure out if the title is equal to janitor, and if it is, then we can extract the hourly wage from column three. Hopefully that makes sense. This is how I did it. Um, again, it's, I think it's important to point out this is just one possible solution. You could very well come up with all sorts of different answers and that doesn't make any of them wrong. This is just how I did it. So one line here, we take janitor as a regular expression, we slap it in the pattern, and then we're looking for the hourly wage and that's in column three. So simply our action is just gonna be print column three. So if the janitor, if janitor matches anything, now notice that we could have used just you know dollar sign seven, which would have been the title of the janitor, but in this case, uh, I just used dollar sign zero. I just matched against any of the the line, but if janitor appears anywhere in that line, it's going to print the hourly wage. And sure enough, when we run the data here, that turned out to be enough. 
So the janitor makes $678 per hour. Uh, now that seems a little high to me, but our janitor is a hero. And if you look at our tabular data, that is the actual correct number. So our janitor is doing fantastic. I would take that job. Challenge number two. What is the name of the CEO? And the printed, the uh, output format should be printed like this. First, last name, comma, first name. So that's intentional because you notice our data is organized first name, last name. Um, I did it this way so that we have to use the print statement to format our output. So we want to find the name of the CEO. I would guess that the CEO is probably a title, much like janitor was, so we can use that. And for the name, first and last name, that's columns one and column two. Uh, column two is the last name, so we're probably going to want to put an output with you know dollar sign two, comma dollar sign one, something like that. Let's take a look at the solution. All right, one liner here, column number six, the title. We're going to do a regular expression compare. And this regular expression is a little more strict than you might be used to. We anchor it to the beginning and end of the input string. So we're making sure that the title is exactly CEO and nothing else. And this squiggly line, the tilde, that is saying do a regular expression match against this. If that matches, we invoke the printf function with a format string, percent %s, comma, percent %s, and a line feed so that it appears nicely on our output. And again, remember, we need last name, comma, first name. Last name is column two, so we do dollar sign two, and first name is dollar sign one. So the CEO is Linus Torvalds. And we have the challenge completed. Okay, which employees were hired on April 16th of 1993? We need to print the entire list. So let's take a look at our data and see what we can use to figure out this answer. We have a start date all the way here at the very end. And that includes the dates when the employees were started. So we can use that and go through and find which one matches April 16th, 1993. But dates, we need to know the correct format. And luckily, the dates format here is very consistent. It's a four digit year slash two digit month slash two digit day. Very useful. So let's convert our date here. So it'd be 1993 slash 04 slash zero or slash one six. So using that, let's take a look at a solution. We use the pattern and column seven is the start date, if you recall. So we're going to take column seven, do a regular expression match and I used a dot instead of the slash because slash is how we delimit our regular expression. So we'd have to escape it and it's not that hard to do, but it's ugly. So I have a habit of just slapping dots in there because they match any character. So we look for exactly 1993.04.16 and then the end here. And when we find it, we just print dollar sign zero. We print the entire line and this is what we get. So we had a handful of people that were hired on April 16th, 1993. The significance of that date, I will leave as an exercise to the reader. Deanne Bixler was hired, Linus Torvalds, Benjamin Porter, that's me. I'm the janitor, that is fantastic news. I forgot I put that in there. So I'm the one that makes $678 an hour. That is phenomenal. I would take that job in a heartbeat. And then we've got a few other people here, Sergey Brin, Larry Page. You may uh, recognize those people. They're somewhat famous. Homer Simpson. He was also hired that date. Um, he's based out of the Springfield office. So those are the employees that were hired on April 16th, 93. Okay, uh, I may have just blown the answer to this one, but let's still try to figure it out using awk. Which employee works in the Springfield office? So let's take a look at our data again. First name, last name, that's gonna be useful, but it's not gonna help us narrow it down. Hourly wage, hours worked. Office, okay, so we have the name of the office. So Deanne works in the Concord office, Isabella works in the Manchester office, uh, Lindia works in Seattle, Benjamin works in Mountain View. So we need to write some sort of an awk expression that uses a pattern to select for Springfield, and then we can just print out the employee's name when we find it. So let's take a look at a solution here. 
pretty straightforward. You were probably guessing something exactly like this. The fifth column, that's our office name. So we're just gonna check. This time we're not using regular expressions and there's no reason not to. I just wanted to show a variety of different ways to approach this so that you don't get into a rut thinking there's only one right way. This time we're just looking for a literal string, the Springfield in uh, st string literal. If that matches the fifth column, then we just print out two columns, dollar sign one, dollar sign two. Remember, this is argument separation, not string concatenation. If we took this comma out, that would be string concatenation, which would not give us the nice result. We're printing out two columns, dollar sign one, dollar sign two, first name, last name. And when we run it, we see the output here. You probably expected this. Homer Simpson is the only employee in the Springfield office. All right, challenge number five. Hopefully you're still there. How many mechanical engineers work here? Well, you probably have already guessed. We're gonna be using the title field again. Let's look at some of our examples here. We've got titles like human resources, software engineer, mechanical engineer. That sounds like it might be interesting here. Human resources, DevOps, more mechanical engineers. So there's quite a few. So if we look at this, mechanical engineers probably have a title that matches this. Mechanical engineer, all one word with a camel case, or I forget what that's called when the very first letter is also capitalized. Uh, anyway, that is the pattern. So let's take a shot at an answer here. But actually, before we do that, notice this one is not asking for data from the specific row. That's a difference. Previously, all the data we've needed to answer the question has been available in a single row or a single record. Not the case anymore. So we're gonna have to get a little more sophisticated. We wanna know how many total mechanical engineers work here. So let's think about how we can do that. We probably need a variable of some sort to track things. And we need to add to that variable as we go. It's also gonna need to be initialized. And then at the end of the script, we need some way to print it out so that we can make use of that data. So think about that one. And here is the answer. Pretty straightforward. You may notice that now I'm actually uh, putting these in a file and it kind of needs to be because they're now getting to be long enough that they wouldn't be super readable all in one command line command. You may remember there's a couple of special patterns here, begin and end. Begin will match the very beginning of our data processing and end will match at the very end. So when this script runs, before processing any lines, awk is going to call our begin action here. And all it does is it sets a variable called count and initializes it to zero. Makes a lot of sense, right? Then each line will come through our script and we will compare it against the sixth field. We'll, each time it comes in, we'll compare it to this pattern. We'll see, does the field number six equal the string literal mechanical engineer? If it does, we just increment our count variable by one. Pretty straightforward. And then we move on to process the next line. Then at the very end, after all of our data is processed, our, this action will get invoked and we can just simply print out the count so we can see how many mechanical engineers work here. This is an example of it being run at the bottom here. So we run the script and there are 1,130 mechanical engineers employed at the company. Not too shabby. All right. Now things are gonna get a little bit more challenging. How many people from the Portwood family work at our company? So we gotta think about stuff a little bit here. We don't have family name in here, but we do have last name, which is also commonly known as surname. And that's a good way to check if somebody is part of the same family. It is of course not foolproof because there are plenty of people in the same family that don't have the same last name. But for sake of simplicity, let's just assume that they do. And let's start thinking about how we solve this. We wanna essentially kind of the same thing as before. We're trying to count the number of records. So we may have a similar pattern here. But this time we're going to take the last name and each time it matches Portwood, we are going to increment our count variable. So this may look very similar. Let's take a look at the solution here. As you expect, it does look very similar. We're just checking for Portwood in the second column now instead. And other than that, this is the same. We have 92 people 
that work at our company from the Portwood family. Nepotism? I don't know. All right, challenge number seven. Are there any employees that have identical first and last names? All right, if you think about some of the solutions we already have, it should be fairly straightforward to figure this one out. We wanna check first name or field number one against last name or field number two. And if they're ever the same, we want to record that. So let's take a look at a solution. This time, we're basically doing the same thing, but we do change it up a tiny bit. This time in our expression, notice that we are just comparing to see if the first column is directly equal to the second column, and only if that is true do we increment our count variable. Now, in the end statement, we're going to use printf to get a nice output here. So we run this against our data, and we say there are zero people with identical first and last names. Now, the way we do that is with this ternary at the end here. So I put this in here so I could demonstrate that this exists in awk, this little ternary expression. So we're gonna take and look at count. If count evaluates, or excuse me, if count is greater than zero, and I really wish this hadn't have gone across the screen here, but if count is greater than zero, then this little test of our ternary evaluates to true, which means that we will print out count. If it is zero or a negative number, then it will print no. Uh, clearly this has failed because uh, it printed zero. So uh, that's embarrassing. Uh, the script is buggy. Maybe you should fix it and send a pull request. That would be a really good exercise. All right, challenge number eight. The question, print each column header along with which column it is. So in this case, we're actually more looking for metadata about the data itself, not not necessarily uh, any sort of evaluation. So, for example, we want the last name, uh, the, excuse me, the last name column is the second column, so print two dash last name. So we want each column header along with the number of column in which it is. So we would want to print two dash last name. So let's start thinking about how we could do this in awk. We have a special variable called nf, if you recall, which is the number of fields so maybe we could take that and use it. We also know that the column headers are only on the first line of our data. So that also needs to be taken into account. So let's take a look at a possible solution here. All right, our pattern. So we've still, in this case, we've got a few lines here and we're gonna get uh, fancy with a for loop, but our pattern is fairly rudimentary. It's going to be a regular expression checked against dollar sign zero, re recall, when there's no explicit comparison here, there's no explicit operand, it defaults to dollar sign zero. So we're going to see, does the whole line start with a regular expression that matches first name? That's only going to match on our first line, but we would need to test this first to make sure that that were true. Then when we get into our action, we're gonna use a for loop we're gonna start with i is equal to one so that we start at the first column. If i is less than eight, so you may notice in this case, this is not, uh, I, I wrote it this way to be an example, but if this were real data, you would probably not wanna use the magic number eight. You would want to use something like nf so that you knew that it was never going to go off. It'd be always the number of fields. So eight should be nf here. And then at the end of our loop, we're going to increment i by one. Each time that this loop runs, it's going to just simply print using a format string, percent %d, which is an integer, dash, and then percent %s, which is a string. i is gonna be our column number, so that'll be the first argument. Dollar sign i is gonna be the name or the value in that header. So when we run it, we get this nice output. Each header is on a new line, and it's the, li it's the header number followed by the header name. Pretty, uh, pretty nice. But again, this eight should be an NF. Challenge number nine. All right, now we're gonna start to get into a little bit deeper. How much money per hour does the Seattle office cost? So let's think about what's being asked here. We know how much per hour each one of these employees makes, and we know which office they're assigned to. 
So let's pretend that we live in a very simple world where there's no fixed costs or anything like that. And the only thing we have to pay for is labor. How much money does it cost us per hour to run the Seattle office? To answer that, we need to go through and see who works at the Seattle office and then how much they make per hour. And then we need to add those together. So let's take a look at a solution. All right, we're gonna make use of a begin block and an end block again. So in our first line here, at the very beginning, let's initialize a variable called sum, set it equal to zero. Then let's take and see if the fifth field or the fifth column matches the regular expression Seattle. If it does, let's take the third column's value, which is their hourly wage, and add it to our running sum. Then at the end, when all the lines have been evaluated and awk invokes our final end block, we will use the printf function to print out a nice line here. The Seattle office costs 0.2f per hour, and we pass our sum. So it costs us $20,000, $833.84 per hour to run the Seattle office. It costs a little bit, but it's worth it. They're good, they do great work up there. All right, challenge number 10. How many engineers of any type work here? You may recall a little earlier, we were asked how many mechanical engineers work here. Now we're going to check how many engineers. So whereas before, where we could check the mechanical engineer literal string, we can't do that anymore because that would produce a, false, uh, a number that's too low. So instead, we could probably reuse most of our solution and just check for our regular expression with engineer instead of mechanical engineer. And that is exactly what we have done. So we have 2,213 engineers that work here. So hopefully you can understand this code at this point. We've already seen this pattern a few times, so I'm not going to explain it. But uh, if this confuses you, you should go back a minute or so into this video and take a look and uh, listen to the explanation from earlier. All right, who is the highest paid employee? This might be a little harder than you think at first. We need to go through all of our data and figure out who makes the most money. Let's start thinking about what it's going to require to do this. We need to keep track of the current high value somehow. And each time we process a line, we need to compare that and see, does this person make more than the previous person? And if they do, then we replace the one that we're tracking as the highest with the new one. But we need to know their name as well. So we've got to keep track of some stuff. Variables are great for tracking stuff. So let's take a look at a solution here. All right, in our begin block, so this is also an example of a multi-line awk script, by the way. In our begin block, we're going to initialize two variables, highest, which is an, a, a number, so we're keeping track of the highest wage, and the name of the person. Then, when each line is processed, we're gonna take dollar sign zero, so the entire line, and we're going to check that it does not match hourly wage. Now, why would we wanna do this? Well, the answer is quite simple. That first line is headers, and it doesn't have an actual value. So if we tried to process that line, our program would crash. So. The very first pattern here is doing nothing but making sure that we're only processing lines with actual data and not headers. Once we get inside of our action block, we use an if statement. We wanna see, is the current wage, which is in column number three, is that higher than the previous highest wage that we encountered? Only if it is, then we want to set highest to the new high value, which will be what's in currently column three. Then for the name, we're gonna set it to first name space last name, and we're gonna take advantage of the sprintf function, which I mentioned earlier. We don't wanna print this out yet because otherwise we'd get a whole bunch of names printed out that didn't make the highest because every time we got a new high value, we would print this out. So we're going to use sprintf to get a formatted string, but we're saving it in a name variable here. Again, first name, last name, those are the first two columns. So that's what those arguments do. Then at the very end, we are going to print out, again with printf, the highest paid person is name who makes this much per hour. Let's take a look to see who that person is. Ah, Linus Torvalds. He's our winner here. He makes 
almost $1,600 an hour. That is not too shabby. Okay, challenge number 12. Who worked the most hours this week? We're, it's getting close to bonus time here, and we need to know who is working the hardest. And as every software engineer knows, it's the number of hours you worked means you're working the hardest. That is the best, absolute best measure of productivity possible. So we need to see who worked the most. Please do not flame me. I was being extremely sarcastic. Okay, who worked the most hours? Let's start thinking about a solution here. Again, we need to keep track of, of a running high, but this time it's not hourly wage, this time it's hours worked. So we're going to probably do something with this hours worked column. And we also need to track the names. So other than that, our solution can probably be pretty similar to the one that we just did. Uh, I threw in this example along with some of the others, so that way if you were following along and you just wanted to try tweaking or hacking on a script that already worked, then you'd have an opportunity to do so. But other than that, our solution looks pretty much the same. But there are there is a small difference here in the number of column we're using. So Jack Ransdell worked a 50-hour week. That's not too shabby. Let's get that man a bonus. All right, we want to anonymize the data. We're being asked to sell all of our employees' data, and since we're a big tech company, we obviously want to sell that data immediately for the highest price, and we're going to do a very naive anonymization so that way we don't get sued. I'm being sarcastic again. So we're going to anonymize the data. So let's talk about what that probably means. We've got first name, last name, hourly wage, hours worked office. In order to anonymize this data, what do we need to remove? Well, we definitely need to remove first and last name, right? Maybe the office, maybe the title, because if you have office and title, even without the names, sometimes, oftentimes, you could probably figure out which employee is who. But we're a big tech company, so we don't need to do that. We're just going to essentially trim the first two columns, first name and last name, and then we will print out the remaining columns, and we'll call that data anonymized. So I mentioned earlier that we could use a variable for referencing a field. So this is an example of how we're going to do that. We're gonna start with the third column because remember the first two are the names and we don't want those to be included in our anonymous data. So we're going to start a loop at three, at column three, and then we're going to say, while well, I is less than or equal to NF, so we're supporting an arbitrary number of, of fields here, which is great, and we're going to increment at the end. So each time we go through for each line, we're going to do, we're going to call printf, and we're going to print that column. And then at the very end, we're going to print new line character. So remember, this is being executed for each line of input. So we're basically printing all the columns here that start from column three and above, and then followed by a new line. And we're using the variable here, so that way if the user has overridden it with his preference or her preference, then we will print out using that preference. So we play well with the rest of the awk world. All right, here's our anonymous data. Um, I piped it into head so that we only have to look at a few to make sure that it's all working, but you can see, um, We've got the names gone, and all that's left is the rest of the information. So now we can apply algorithms and de-anonymize it by taking the office and title, but we won't do that. Okay, challenge number 14. Our client is complaining about the anonymized data before. It is too hard to read. They would like us to add line numbers to the output. So if you recall earlier, there was an example that I showed you, a quick one-liner that adds line numbers to the output. That's very useful. And what we could do is just take the solution from the challenge prior, then number 13, and just pipe it into our one-liner awk script. So we've got awk piping to awk, and that will add our line numbers. And that would be perfectly acceptable. And in the real world, that is probably what I would do. However, for purposes of teaching and demonstration, we are going to write a script that will add the line numbers and anonymize the data all in one command. So it's just one awk script to do it all. So 
let's start thinking about solutions here. We're probably going to want to use the nr variable, which keeps track of our line numbers, so we don't have to create our own. And other than that, we've already kind of got a solution. So let's take a look at a possible answer. Here, we're going to use a self-encapsulated awk script with a shebang at the top here. So this script is self-standalone executable. What we're going to do very first, notice there is no pattern here, so every line matches. When we get a new line, we're going to first print out the line number here, followed by a colon, followed by a tab, and then we're going to drop into a for loop. Again, we're starting where i equals 3, and then going to the end, uh, whereas we're using nf to compare, so we support an arbitrary number of columns, and then we increment the column number, so we can print the values here. Then, at the very end, we're going to print with the new line character. So, again, we're playing nice. If the user has overrode this variable with their preference, then we will use that instead. All right, here's what the solution looks like after we've run it. So, we run the script, which is self-encapsulated. We pass our payroll data as the first argument, and we're going to pipe it into head and take only the first 15, so that way uh, we can just get a preview because that's all we care about. So this is what our anonymized data looks like now. We've got our nice line numbers, and then a tab, and then each column here. All right, challenge number 15. How many different office locations does the company have? All right, uh, this was not the one I thought. We totally could have used associative arrays, but we didn't. This is an example of when you can do something in awk, but maybe you don't want to. Maybe it's a little bit easier to do it outside of awk and just use existing Unix tools. So in this case, we're going to pass a one-liner to awk. We care about column number five because that is where the offices are. So we're going to first check to make sure that dollar sign one does not equal or does not match the regular expression first name. We do that again so that we don't check the headers because the headers are not a real office name. We don't want to include that in our data. So then we take every line, which will match, because every line except the headers will. We print the office location, which is $5, and then we pipe that to sort. Sort is going to sort them, and then pipe it to unique. Unique is going to sort that, and then we can actually pipe it back to awk, and we can use the variable nr in an end block to print out how many lines we've read. Pretty handy. So this will tell us the number of different office locations, which is 8. Now, of course, we could have put a, another uh, pattern here that just matched every line and then printed out each individual office. There's a lot of options there, but we didn't need to. The question was just how many different locations are there, not provide a list of them. So here's our solution. All right, number 16. What is the average wage? All right, start thinking about how we go through this. Well, we need to keep track of hourly wage, and we need to do some math on it. How do we calculate average? Uh, I'll give you a hint. You sum up the total number of, uh, or the, the total amount. So if you have, say, five wages, you sum them together, and then divide by the number of wages that you, that you had. So it would be the first five added together divided by five, and that's how you would get the average. So let's take a look at a solution using awk. All right, the first thing you may notice, we have defined a function here called getName, which takes the first and a last name and then returns a nice formatted string that we can then use. That's uh, pretty handy there. When you have programs that get of moderate length, then you're going to probably want to use these functions like this. Our first part, this begin pattern, we're going to start and initialize sum and count, set them equal to zero. And then in our next one, we're going to take the entire line, check that it doesn't match hourly wage. So again, we're filtering out our headers, which is very important. Then we're going to sum, we're going to use sum, we're going to plus equals it to dollar sign three. So we're going to add the hourly wage of this current employee, and we're going to keep our running sum. But we also need to count how many employees we processed. Now, we could use nr, but we can also use count here. 
and it may be more clear to use count. So that's what we're going to do in this case. Clarity is important when you're writing code. Then at the very end, in our end block here, we've got, we're going to use the printf function and we're going to say the average wage is here per hour and we calculate that right here, sum divided by count and we have our average. When we run the program, we get the average wage is $31.39 per hour. All right, now we're going to check some integrity here. We're gonna see, are there any duplicate entries in the data? And we're going to define duplicate entries as people with the same name that appear more than once. We're going to assume that no two people could have exactly the same first and last names. So if that occurs, we have an error where one person has appeared more than once. Using that, let's start thinking about how we would solve this. We're probably gonna zero in here on first and last name, but there are going to be plenty of people that have the same first name, but different last names. Those are not the same people, those are not errors. Likewise, there's gonna be plenty of people that may have the same last name, but they don't share the same first name. That is also not an error. The only condition that's an error is where the first name is equal to the last name and it appears in more than one line. So we need to keep track of all the names that we have seen before. That, you may think, might be a good use of the associative array to keep track of things that we've already seen. So let's take a look at the solution here. All right, we're going to return our get name function from before because that was really convenient. So we've got that. This case, we're just using string concatenation to combine first and last. Now, why would we do that? Because if you recall with the string concatenation, it doesn't put a space in there. Well, the reason why we're gonna do that is we need some way to get a unique hash key that for every first and last name that are different will calculate to a different value. And every, it, but the first, same first and last name will deterministically calculate to the same value as well. Basically, we want to generate unique keys for our associative array when the first and last names are unique when the first and last names are the same, they should calculate to the same hash value. So that way we can tell that we've seen it before. So let's step through this, it might make a little more sense. In our opening block, we've got our begin, we initialize count to zero, and we're gonna set a marker at 9999. It's gonna, you're gonna kinda understand what this is for, but we're using an associative array, and we've gotta have a key and a value. 9999 doesn't mean anything, it's just a random value, and that's what we're gonna use as a value. And hopefully that'll make more sense here in a minute. We get to our second thing here, and we've got our pattern, dollar sign one does not equal first name. Again, we're just filtering out the first line which contains headers, because we don't wanna use that. Then we drop into an if statement. Here we're going to reference an array. Remember, you do not have to declare arrays ahead of time. You can just start using them. So we've got an array called names. We're going to call our get name function with the first and last name. Remember this column one is first name, column two is, sec is last name. And it's going to return us our hash value or the key in this associative array that we should use to look up. And we're going to check if that is equal to marker. Remember, we don't have to initialize these. So if we have never called, if we've never set the the name here as a key, it's going to come back as empty. It won't match marker. But if we've set it before, then marker is in there set and it will match. And then we know we have a duplicate. So we can increment count here by one. If the name is not already in the array, that's a good thing. That means we haven't seen it yet. We're going to add it down here. We're gonna use the same function. So we get the same hash key each time deterministically. We're gonna use the same array names we're going to set that person's name, that, that hash key at that same value and then use the marker value to put a value in there. So the next time we encounter that exact name, we will see it in this if statement and we can count the duplicate right here. So it's really not too bad. It's, it, it really doesn't have a lot to do with awk. It's more about understanding associative arrays. If you're super confused, if you've never used a hash map before or anything like that, 
um, you may want to not worry about this because it's not aux specific. It's a kind of a common computer science issue. Then in our end block, we're going to just print out our results. There are this many people out of this many with identical first and last names. And to get the total number of people, we're gonna use NR, the number of records. And the number of people with identical names is this count that we have incremented here. So let's run this and see if our data is good. Oh no, we have some duplicate entries here. 392 people out of 4,514 have identical first and last names. That's not good. We have some pretty serious data integrity issues. Good thing it's not our database. All right, who was the first employee hired? Let's think about how to solve this. At this point, you should probably be pretty adept at solving these on your own, but we know we have to care about first and last name, and we know we have to care about start date. So we're gonna wanna iterate through our data, go through each line, see, and uh, we'll track which of the start dates is the oldest. So kind of like when we were doing our running total for the highest value, we'll flip it now and we'll check lowest value and we'll see who was first hired. But there's a slight wrinkle here because we can't compare these dates directly. That's not gonna make sense. To awk, this is just a random string. It doesn't understand the date type. So we're going to have to parse this date type somehow and figure it out. And to make sure that you don't cheat and just only use the year, I've made it so that the months and days matter too. So think about how you would solve this and let's take a look at my solution. All right, this is uh, kind of the biggest one we've got so far. Let's walk through it. Our get name function returns, but this time it's not doing a key or anything. It's just really the uh, formatted string so that we can print it nicely. Then in our begin, we are going to keep track here of the year, the month, and the date independently because those are numbers, those are integers, and those do mean something to awk. So we can use operators like less than or equal to and greater than you with these numbers and make meaningful comparisons. We also need to keep track of the name. So we initialize the name variable to empty string. We start by filtering out our headers, which you should be very used to by now. Then we're gonna use that split function this is one of those string functions I mentioned before. We're gonna use the date field, which is dollar sign seven, and we're going to store it in this date variable. Notice we're not assigning the output here. Split is going to ask us for a variable and it's going to store the result in that date. So date is going to become an array when split is done with it. And we need to provide a value to split on. If you recall, the default is to split on white space or the field separator, but we don't wanna use the field separator. In this case, the slash is how we do differentiate between years and dates, uh, years and days and months. So we're going to split on that. So now date is an array and it has as the first value our year, the second is the month and the third is day. Now there's something fun funky about this. Remember, I told you that arrays are associative, they're not traditional arrays. But split is really, it needs to return an array that has, you know, that looks more like a traditional array. It's not an associative array, we wanna use index numbers. Split is actually going to return a one indexed array. If you're used to most languages like C, for example, you probably would expect date zero to be the first one. And that is not an unreasonable expectation, but it would be wrong in this case. So arrays are all associative in awk, but there's a convention around functions that use arrays as though they were traditional arrays. They will be one indexed or one based. So the, there is no date zero, it's date one. That's kind of an important thing to know. So date one is going to have our year. So now let's do some comparisons here with these if statements. First, we're gonna check to see is the current date, so date is, remember, remember this is our current line. Is it lower than our lowest year we've seen so far? Remember, we initialized up here, lowest year is four nines, lowest month is two nines, lowest day is nine nines. That, you may notice those, those aren't valid values, but that doesn't matter. We're just trying to keep track of the lowest. So these are the highest possible values because year is four digits, month is two digits, day is two digits. There is not going to be one that's higher than this. So that's why those are the starting values. 
So the first row we process is going to be lower than this. So this if will succeed. So if that's true, we are gonna set the lowest year to date one, lowest month to date two, lowest date to date three. And we store the name using our get name function. Now, why did we set month and day when we only checked the lowest year? Well, that's because the year is what matters the most. We only need to care about month and day when the year is the same. So that takes us to our next if. So in this case, we're not lower than the lowest year. So now we need to check, are we equal to the lowest year? Because let's say we've already processed that year. We've already looked at 1983 and we've got a value for that. Well, we don't necessarily know if this record we're processing is the same year, it could have happened in an earlier month or an earlier day, and we still need to account for that. So if the year matches our lowest year and the date is lower than the lowest month, now we need to set the lowest month and again, the lowest day. Remember, day is underneath month. We don't track day independently because it doesn't make sense out of context. So we override lowest month and lowest day with date at two and date at three. And again, we need to update our name. Now, let's say that we're tracking through and we've got somebody who was hired in the same year and the same month as the previous person. What we care about now is, was, is the current day lower than the previous lowest day that we've seen? If it is, we need to update. So we set the lowest day to that date and then we update the name. After running through this algorithm, we will have figured out who is the very first employee that was hired. We can then print that out in our end block at the bottom there with our format string. We pass the name, lowest year, lowest month, lowest day. And what does it look like? We find out Elvera Felkins was our first employee ever, hired on January 6th of 1975. All right. That takes us to the end of the challenges. I hope you had a good time with this. It wasn't meant to be hard. It was meant to be learning experience, but some of these exercises were a little bit rough, but hopefully you ran into something and you learned about awk and hopefully you see its value. Um, if not, I have completely failed you and I beg your forgiveness. Hopefully you'll be able to go out and use awk for something cool. If you fix any bugs or you notice anything wrong in this, by all means, feel free to send me a pull request. Or if you want to add some more challenges on there or something, you know, I'd, I'd love to see what solutions you come up with. I think that'd be really cool. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I look forward to potentially speaking with you in the future. Thank you.